How's it going guys? I'm Mike from TV Nation and this is a wooden deck that we have prepped to be installed and we're going to go ahead and drop one of these in here today. Our, these are our dry hatches. They're pretty robust. They're going to last you forever, probably the life of your boat. But there's a whole lot of questions on how you install these, how you choose the whole size, what that all means, how they actually fit into something like this wood deck, which is common in most boats. So we're going to go and cover that all by installing this in right now. Most boats, such as this Tracker Pro 175, come with wood decks and aluminum hatches. Both of these components will likely far outlast whatever is covering them for decking, such as carpets. The previous owner of this boat took all the carpet off and non-skidded the wood and the hatches because of mildew and smell. But left exposed, the wood sort of starts to do its organic thing and splits, so the deck can still be used but it needs to be resurfaced. And also the hatches, which were gapped for carpet, were built initially to compensate for the thickness both width and height wise for carpet around it. And now absent the carpet, the hatches are actually too small for the compartment size. Given the recent advancements in EVA foam and our test of leaving it in the scorching hot Mojave desert for I think a few summers now, its performance far exceeds carpet in almost every venue. Comfort, heat dissipation, but even more impressively, the product is very resistant to damage, not only from gear, but how it's made allows it to resist UV damage from the sun. So we look at cost-effective options in this video, both for replacing old hatches, possibly extending the deck, or just adding new things in. The cheapest method by far is just to get plywood, construction grade plywood, marine grade is the best. I would avoid treated plywood because it's not going to give you any more benefit than construction grade and it can likely corrode your hull if it's aluminum. You want the best grade plywood you can find where one side of the sheet is perfectly smooth. That will help you later on in the decking phase for foam. If your deck is salvageable, then go ahead and resurface it and repaint it. Then you can just use it. But if you have to make an all new deck or a deck extension, the wood you use to complete the project will not only have to be treated to resist water damage, but also have a smooth, pliable surface for the adhesive and the back of the EVA foam to stick to. This can be done a few ways. The best way is to part marine epoxy, but both epoxy paint and oil-based enamel paints have also been used to preserve the wood. So what's unique about these hatches is they come in their own frame, making them incredibly easy to install and very, very strong. No one having to worry about how deep you can get the deck, recessing it so it fits the lid so it's all fit straight. This whole thing fits in just as is. That being said, this is your whole size. The overall hatch is going to be about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half thicker on each of the sides. So the hatch itself is wider, but that's to fit on top. So the flange fits on top of the deck, but the actual whole size is the size of the track frame. So this whole size specifically here is 30 inches by 14. So there's a 14 by 30 inch lid, that would be your whole size. And then the inside, the inside lid will be slightly smaller than the actual whole size, but that's because it has to fit into the dry track. Now this is a dry track, meaning most of the time under normal conditions, it will divert water that comes into the boat. That's water from slight rain and water from waves splashing over the boat while in transit. We have a bleed off port here. And we also include a runoff tube that you install at the bottom of your compartment, wherever you want the rudder to run. If you choose a latch option, we will go ahead and cut the hole for you for the latch. Otherwise, it's 2.75 inches from the edge of the dry track in. You can do that with a hole saw or we can just do it for you. We also do include a high quality latch for these with each purchase of the whole system. A lot of people do do that. It is a no brainer to almost go that way. But if you have your own cam lever latch preferences, it's up to you. So if this were my wood deck and I was about to stall into a boat and I needed one hatch in it or two or three, however many you want it, this is how I would do it. I would get this and just put it where I want it. I would do measurements to make sure it lines up. And then once it's lined up, I would go ahead and trace it out to put it where I need it. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and take a marker. Right 
All right, now you got your hole cut. See if it fits. Should fit just like that. You got a little slight wiggle room, not a big deal, right? Because eventually you're gonna go ahead and tie this down. All right guys, you see all this? Choose, all you need to install these are countersink screws. I would preferably, I would tell you preferably stainless steel. The wider, the little bit thicker, but still short. It doesn't need to be terribly thick. If you wanted to go all the way through the wood, that's gonna be the better, like stronger penetration. So something like these are probably gonna be what we're gonna be using. We're going to be drilling and then countersinking. We're gonna just permanently install this to the wood deck. You're gonna do this by, with a drill and a countersink and some screws. Probably use a smaller bit here, hold on. All right, here are the holes. I like them about three to four inches apart. That's a pretty good spread. Once you put the turf or your carpet over the hatch, whichever one you choose, it'll never move anyways, but really I like a good spread that's just gonna add for more longevity over time. You could do one every six inches or eight inches, but one every three to four inches means this hatch is gonna be on this piece of wood for a very long time, no matter. Now I've noticed this, there's a whole lot of ways to preserve wooden decks like these. Right now, all I have done, because I'm trying to prep this wood for hydro turf to stick to it, is I used oil-based enamel from Rust-Oleum, and you can pretty much find this anywhere in the Lowe's, Home Depot, they all have them. And I also, the first initial coats, I did thin it with paint thinner so it would penetrate deeper into the wood. And once you, if you put it on this type of, you know, construction grade plywood, it's gonna soak it in you, even after a few coats. So the kind of rule is let it soak in a little bit. So many coats, let it dry. You don't, you wanna get it to where it soaks in and dries, but not where it's real thick and then it's like soft and sticky. If you coat it too fast, um, it'll stay wet forever. So you gotta just be real conscientious of how much it goes on. But once you get a nice clean surface like this, that's shiny like so, then HydroTurf will stick right to it. So the shinier and the glossier the surface there is, the better turf will stick to it. If you have a wooden deck in your boat already, which is highly likely because a lot of these boats just have wooden decks that are carpeted or whatever, you can just resurface that wood if it's still in good enough condition. Resurface it, repaint it, or even better, marine epoxy it and then you just breathe a whole bunch of brand new life into that wooden deck of yours and then you could just install a hatch just like this like how we did here now for some of you who are asking why are we spending all that money on the aluminum hatches just to run them in wood decks why not just run the entire thing wood since you can make wood hatches and you can make them very effectively well the reason is the sheer amount of labor and time and things you have to do to wood in order to make sure it doesn't fail almost immediately within a season is so time consuming that at the end of the day you have to wonder how much money you actually saved with all the time you wasted making them just in general wood hatches do not perform near as well as aluminum hatches but a wooden deck where all it has to do is just lay there and not move that performs tremendously that thing could be there for 30 years almost the life of the boat and most of those decks despite some organic cracking still hold up fairly strong you can't even tell unless you got the carpet off and look at the condition so what we found to be the best practice for a budget friendly build which is what most boat builders out there are doing already is wood decks aluminum hatches that will last you a long time up to 30 years we've seen it in this boat this is an all aluminum deck aluminum everything and this is the boat we just showed you where most of it is made out of wood. You stand on it, you can't tell the difference. How you take care of the boat while it's not on the water is often going to dictate the life of anything on it. For instance, this boat was one of the first ones where we did our dry hatches into a wood deck. And we went the extra route to even resin coat the entire thing to make a high performance deck that was prepped for hydro turf. The results are pretty shocking. It needs less under supports. Wood per span is stronger than aluminum when you step on it, it's more rigid. But we found over time that it doesn't have to be that extensive, that you can get comparable results with simpler methods. 
like what we're about to show you. Yeah, pull a little off. I don't pull the whole thing off, and that's just to kind of get it to where it needs to be. Let's see how that's sticking to it. Simply put, out of all the material you could use for decking, carpet, marine vinyl, non-skid paint, HydroTurf has been the toughest, longest standing, most comfortable and heat dissipating material ever. I have used cheap Amazon foam. It started becoming oxidized within a season and was miserable to get off and redo. I use this stuff. Even three years later in the hot 120 degree summers we have down here, it stays fine. I don't have zero issues. It looks almost brand new, like the day I put it on. You got this stuff, you put that on there? It's yeah. stuck on there? Yeah. How sure. did it stick on there with no prep? Yeah, I don't know, but it's been on there for two years. Dude, you didn't even do anything to preserve it, did you? Nope, it's been in the sun for two years. It's not even powdering. Nope. Look at that. But it does, I don't know. If well, that's that's from Amazon. Uh -huh. That was the black tip. Yeah, that's not gonna make it. So there It doesn't have the UV inhibitors that HydroTurf has like straight out to make it that's pretty cool i didn't know you did that it's a, the color itself it's weird the color itself faded but it didn't disintegrate like it's it fine evenly. you wouldn't know. all right so you want a really sharp utility knife blade and we put them into your knife of choice and we're gonna go ahead and cut this Never throw your pieces away. Keep them until you know you're not going to use them. All right. Now you can template this. If you want to template your own stuff, put it on the turf, cut it out, put it on here. That's completely up to you. You could also just not do that and cut it straight out here. Now it's a little bit easier for us because we can see the seam here. So we'll be cheating a little bit. Normally this would all be covered up. We're only gonna do half the deck here as this is an example. But what you wanna do is find the grooves here and pinch your turf down, make it stick there. Cause the farther down it is, the better it is, okay. right down the edge of the lid track. Same thing, keeping positive pressure with a very sharp blade. Go ahead and make that cut. You can go ahead and pull that up. Now, using that same one, that same edge, we're gonna go ahead and cut it here. Cut this end off. That's gone. Now you'll find that edge right there on the edge of the hatch. And then there will be a slight cut on each edge, like so. It's better to drag it. You're going to get a lot more precise cut dragging it. I should have went on the other side and dragged it. So this is the hole for the lid. You don't need to load the rubber grommet anymore. These teeth will bite naturally into the turf and keep it straight. It should go something like that. Then you will put your cam lever on, screw it on there, adjust it, and then tighten it down with an Allen key when it's ready. And then there's your hatch installed. All right, guys, so there you have it. I've tried to show you guys this more in detail, but it always gets kind of lost in the boat build. So I finally just made a mock up deck just to show how easy it is to apply this and put it into wood. I hope we covered all the basics of the most important things when we're looking into what is actually worth to put your money in. If you are on a budget, it is totally worth doing full wooden decks and side panels but keeping your framing aluminum as well as your hatches, and then of course, the HydroTurf. Done correctly, this boat should last you a good long while, and anybody else after who gets it from you. If you're fairly light, like 200 pounds or slightly over that, then half inch or more preferably 5 eighths plywood would be 
really beneficial in terms of weight savings. But if you want to just a more robust deck that'll hold people up to 300 pounds plus, then three quarter inch plywood is needed. And our hatches are always gusseted with hat channel underneath to support the heaviest of loads. Anyways, guys, I hope you have fun out there. We'll see you on the next one. Please feel free to let me know what other tutorials you would really like to see in specific. Thank you for watching. Tight lines.